artist, boxer, content creator, influencer. The fucking enigma is in the building, Jordan Simi. Welcome to Life, Money and Love, bro. I love fashion. I love art. I love creating. I love meeting new people. This being the funny guy who goes out and gets fucked up and talks about hooking up with chicks, that's a facade. I, I try and chase things that make me step out of my comfort zone, right? Sorry. Fuck, man, I'm sick and tired of doing this. I've realized that I have to be like this to bring up my family and friends around me. Because if I don't, then I let them down. I let down people who have sacrificed things for me. So it's not even like a confidence of like, yeah, I'm the man. It's like, I have to be the man. I want to be the man, but I have to be the man because I've got people relying on me that need me to do this. It's not how much money I've made. It's not the homes I have or the cars or whatever it may be, but it's the people that I've affected. Do things that are outside of your comfort zone. That's the only way that you can grow. You don't need to be a professional athlete. You don't need to be a content creator. Do things that you wouldn't normally do. When you start ticking off those types of boxes, it's amazing. You grow as a person. Just quickly before we get started, guys, if you've been enjoying the podcast, can I please ask that you consider leaving a five-star review and subscribing on whatever platform you've been listening. It really helps the podcast grow. Ready? Perfect. Artist, boxer, content creator, <laughs> influencer. The fucking enigma is in the building, Jordan Simi. <laughs> Welcome you. to Life, Money and Love, bro. Thank you so much for having me, bro. I really appreciate it, eh? No, look, bro, fashionably late, but it wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> like, we weren't even stressed, bro. We're like, ah, oh, Simi, you'll be around. He's always here. Um, but, bro, there's so much I want to fucking talk to you about. You're such an interesting character, personality that's just everyone knows you in Sydney. But I want to go a little bit deeper than all that. Like, bro, everyone off the street, they see you on social media, all the all the podcasts, all the content from YKTR. Yeah. You're this lovable larrikin. And obviously that's a big side of you. But in your own words, bro, what? Well, before, just for anyone listening, I want to know like where your headspace is at. Who is the real Jordan Simi? Um, I actually, I'm actually really, really happy you asked me, man. Uh, because yeah, as you, uh, uh, like you know, you everyone plays a bit of a character on social media, right? Like, um, uh, the real me is um, I'm a lover. I'm a massive lover. Um, you know, the boys will call call me a bit of a simp. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I think it's a good thing. You can thing. take the good out of it for um, sure. I care a lot. I love love my friends, love the people around me. Um, I I feel like there's there's a persona that like I I, I must let out that you know I'm arrogant, asshole. Uh, fuck I didn't boy. think that ever, bro. I, I didn't think that to be I, honest. I, I get, I get a lot of that. I get a lot of people say, say this to me when they meet me out or like I'll, have, I'll be having drinks with a random person or someone that's like in the out, out circ, uh, outskirts of our friendship circle. And then like even like girls, you know, females I'll be t- talking to, they'll go, you know, what? I actually thought you're like, you're an asshole, but you're actually a really nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> but the real me, man, uh, I'm just, I'm a lover, bro. I'm a lover. Um, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote, really. You're a big softy, huh, on the, on the inside? Mate, I am, yeah, I'm pretty soft. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit of an emotional guy, yeah. you know. I, always, I go off emotion. I'm trying to change that, but, yeah, I'm an emotional guy, bro, yeah. Um, I love life, and, yeah, that's about it. You, we, we were just chatting. You took uh, a little bit of time out of, like, the limelight, let's say, of full-time content creation. Yeah. Been what, like seven months since that? Yeah, about seven, eight months. Yeah. What yeah. What do you feel like you've learned? You've had a lot of time to yourself to yeah. like fucking like reevaluate <laughs> who you are, who you want to be, yeah. the things you're doing that you don't want to do. Like, what do you think you got from the last, say, seven months taking a bit of a break from from being that character on screen yeah. every day? Well, uh, I, I, I learned a lot about the situation that I was in um, and, um, you know, sort of, the company, uh, YKTR sort of had that breakup and then had the breakup with my ex and I got to sit with myself for a bit. And, you know, usually I, I don't jump from relationship to relationship, but, um, I took some time I didn't, haven't even been dating. Um, like, <laughs> like love life's been fucking zilch, like absolutely nothing. I've just been doing my own thing. Um, sitting with myself, man, and just planning my next step and, yeah. Um, for me, I got to reflect on, as I said, the last situation, um, a lot of people would be like, oh, you know, you got hard done by and this and that, but I, am very grateful for what the boys did for me. Um, and, uh, they built me up pretty much and, and, and gave me the platform to put myself out there. So I'm always very grateful for that. And, you know, Ice and I are friends again and all that jazz. And, um, and I look at that and 
the direction that I'm going in, I'm pretty much building that of what I learned from uh, working at YKTR. So it was a fucking, it was a, it was a positive for me always. And How long then, were you at YKTR? Um, I started YKTR. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Um, I would have been there for about a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Not, not that long, but I was always around like sort of annoying the boys. I lived with Normie for quite some time. So, but I, I learned a lot then. And I feel like that YKTR was a, a, a point for a lot of people that are in this space now to look at and go, shit, like we can do that. Um, so I'm very grateful for that time. And I'm building, what I'm building now is off the back of what I learned there. And, you know, as I said, with the breakup, um, I sort of was like, yeah, just sat with myself and sort of <laughs> tried to learn from all these, you know, mistakes and, you know, negatives and positives that, that came about that last seven months. And, I'm um, about to move into my new place in Bondi. So it's, a, it's turning a new leaf, you know, um, and really figuring out who I want to be moving forward. Cause everyone was like, Oh, come on, man, you got to do this. You got to do that. But uh, the guy that I was being at YKTR, it was really taxing. It was like, sure, you know, being this like, um, you know, high energy all the time and like, yeah, I'm partying, party animal, party this, party that. So it was putting out this, this perception of, of the, person I, I didn't actually want to be no no one was asking me to it would just happen naturally you know but like, like if you're out on the street right and someone bumps into you do you feel like at times there was an expectation of fucking like be that character all the time and like you're just 100 percent on yeah. full energy full blast all the time well one thing i it was yeah it was and i am that guy but what i didn't realize was um because of, I was around my friends, I was always like, yeah, you know, because it's just like you're talking to your, your mates. Yeah. You're talking to your best friends, you know, so there's no filter. So I was that guy within my circle of friends, but as soon as we'd go out or something, you'd run into the boys and, and stuff and you'd you'd be, you'd require, like people would require you to be that type of guy to them, but they you know, you don't know who these fucking guys are <laughs> that are jumping on your back. You're like, get the hell off me. I'm telling you, the, some people would tackle me and shit and like, like they were my best friends. So uh, a lot of people in my friendship circle know that I actually get really bad social anxiety. So yeah, it's, it, it was, it was a learning curve, but fuck, like it was, it was cool though. It was cool. I enjoyed it's like, it. These people watch you and they feel like they know you, but it's like, it's a one way relationship yeah, and it's like, yeah. you can, you can, you can be super cool with it yeah. and respect that and be grateful for it, but it's still a weird thing, particularly like if it just comes on out of the fucking blue, right? Well, I'm a ra- bro. I'm a <laughs> I'm a random dude, so yeah, it was yeah. like I but I wasn't playing fucking sports and all this jazz, so I felt like it, I had impo- there was like imposter syndrome. I was like, no, no, all good, man. Like just let's just hang out, let's just vibe, and they'd be like, oh, okay, too cool, too cool. But I mean, um, it, yeah, it was it was I, I learned a lot of that whole that whole process. It was. A, it was amazing. And, um, yeah, now I sort of know what direction I want to go in moving yeah. forward. Heart Gallery is going to be one of the things I want to talk to you about. Everything yeah. you want to build with that, all the content stuff. I don't know if you're talking about that publicly, some of your plans for the future, we'll get into all that. But yeah. I want to kind of get a little bit more into like the fucking origin story of Jordan Simi, because like you said, and as someone like, I, I, I'm a footy guy. Like I grew up in, in the Southwest. Like I, I grew up playing footy, um, but I wasn't as – like I'm a little bit older than the, like Joe and the other boys. So I didn't watch as much of like the YKTR content and stuff. I always just assume you played footy with all those boys. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, you didn't. Like what's, what's the Jordan Simi <laughs> origin story? How did you get to where you are today? Like I heard one thing as well that surprised me. Like you're managing like a team of over hundred salespeople. I'm like, fuck this guy yeah. full in corporate, like one of the biggest gyms, like in the, yeah. in the country. Talk to me about how, how you did get here. You said you, you weren't the footy boy, but how so, did you get here? Man, I, it's, was it was it fuck it's pretty wild but I was like long story short um I moved from New Zealand to Perth uh played footy over there um you know a few personal issues with family and friends I was homeless for about three years um living in Northbridge jumping in and out of houses on mates couches um and I I learned a lot about sort of life because I went to one of the best private schools in New Zealand, King's College, King's Prep. I got a scholarship there from 10 years old. And uh, going there, I met a lot of businessmen, friends, fathers, went to mansions. So I 
so where I was from in South Auckland and then seeing that I had seen best of both worlds, you know, I um, mean, it taught me how to uh, communicate with people from all walks of life. And uh, it showed me where I wanted to go. So that homeless stage for me, it did cause a lot of trauma, <laughs> like, but it taught me a lot as well. It taught me a lot about just, just being persistent and pushing through hard times and all that shit. But it's like, how many fucking hard times do I need to push through? But, um, and you know, I, I went back at the start of the year for UFC Perth, uh, to interview Rob Whitaker and Islam and all these UFC fighters. And I was like, it's just, I went back to the spot where I used to sleep and it's a train station now, but I was like, holy shit, this is just, it was weird being there. Um, but how I, how I came about, I moved to Sydney, um, you know, and it was just a whole new world for me. It was a, it was just trying to, um, survive in this like fast paced place. And, um, I, I was training and living in Maroubra, uh, and I, I actually started training with James Chico. Um, and he introduced me to the boys and that's sort of like how everything sort of started to roll on, moved in with Normie down in Cronulla, but I was very jump. I was, I was really like, um, I couldn't stay in one place. I couldn't stay in one place. I was just always moving. And I would, I say this to my friends, like I was always trying to survive, like live paycheck to paycheck. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't really feel like at home anywhere. And I think that was just a product of like where, how I grew up. So it was hard for me to just feel stable in any environment I was in. So I always felt like I was giving up a lot of great opportunities and, you know, and trying to find something that I was very passionate about and a place where I felt at home uh, around people that I felt at home with. And um, I mean, I only probably got that over the past two years to be fair, but yeah, it was a lot of jumping around and, you know, but the one thing is Normie and I stayed very, very close. He's like a bit of a brother to me now. So, well, not a bit, he's like a brother to me. Yeah. So uh, he was just going to ice. Yo, we need to get Jordan on. He's fucking funny. He's fucking funny. So then eventually I rock up to YKTR off was blind <laughs> and cause we were supposed to go out and then the boys go, come on. Like, um, one of the guys didn't show up to do the, uh, a, a podcast, a live podcast. So they jump, chuck me on and everyone's like, who the hell's this guy? Like, give him a podcast. Like, so I just started joining content and probably with over like a five, six month period, it just, I was just like, shit, let's just give you your own podcast and see how you go. Was that grass in a few reds? Is that yeah. where it started? Well, yeah. well, yeah, it started off as Jordan's room, interviewing people. And then Jacko, uh, Jacko jumped on board as like, uh, he was just pushing the buttons. And then him and I just started clicking and then we were like, fuck, why don't you jump on and start a podcast? <coughs> and it started to do really well. Like um, it was doing really, really well, but it was just finding a, uh, the thing is I don't look at it as my own business. Um, I was very inconsistent with that. Uh, you know, there, there was just a lot of, everyone was just all over the shop with, you know, and it was hard to get buy-in when you're not buying in. You know, you're like, why is no one buying in? And it's like fucking hungover, rocking up to a podcast late, all that sort of shit. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was good. It was a, Good learning lesson for me. Yeah. What do you feel like now you're out on your own? You're going to start like, as you said, you're going to like replicate a lot of what you learned, what, what, yeah. what, what you guys did with YKTR, but in your own vision, in your own way, what do you think you'd do differently this time now that like you've got to be hundred percent bought in because if you're not bought in, no one's going to do it for you. I think the biggest thing for me, <laughs> the biggest thing for me is to stay off the piss. <laughs> like, that's like my biggest thing is like stay off the piss. Cause like, I, I'm just a, like, when I get on the piss, I'm just like a party animal. You know? And then it's just like, a, it's a domino effect. So for me, that's just it. That's, that's the, the one thing, but moving forward, um, it's being organized, being, being organized, knowing what the game plan is. Um, uh, the guy that I'm, I'm going to be working with, um, it's, it's also respecting his time, respecting other people's time um, and, you know, just yeah, just being consistent, bro. That's the, that's the thing. That was my issue back in the day. I, I, I wasn't consistent or I wasn't fully 100% bought into it. Yeah. 
Well, like you've, you've all spoken about it, like from all of your own perspective, like you've all just had your own shit going on at the same time. You've all have now, like you've all, like you said, had your breakups, had your little fucking <laughs> things going on. But literally you've all seem now in a better place than where you were six months ago when all that shit happened. So it's like taking that next step can be such a fucking positive thing. And it's like sometimes people can just stay in what's comfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and not like take the uncomfortable step of, realizing, Hey, is this actually what I want to be doing? Is this the right space for me? Is this yeah. the right career for me? Is this the right fucking content I'm putting out? So making that change and pivoting can be fucking such a good move. Now we'll get into what some of those things are in a little bit. I want to ask you, but one thing you said before, I found this interesting when I was doing a little bit of research on you, because you seem like from like someone who knew about you, but didn't know like all about you, you seem like the type of guy that you can, because of your charisma, you can just show up, laugh, smile, talk your way into any room yeah. and things. It seems like from the outside looking in, oh, things have always been easy for this guy. Yeah. But like hearing more about your story and your past, it couldn't be further from the truth. And it's like, do you feel like sometimes people assume that assumption that I had that you're just, that I did, that you're this happy go lucky guy, everything always just works out easily for you. And they, yeah. that creates a little bit of Jealousy might not be the wrong word, but like as soon as you make one little mistake, people want to cut you down for it. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. That's one thing that I've had over the, you know, the last two years with putting myself out there in the public eye. It's just I don't I don't care what people think about me. Because I know me, I know my friends around me know who I am. But sometimes I just sit there and I go, What the fuck? <laughs> like, where do people get where do people get get off on saying this stuff? You know, even you know, it just it's just, it's wild, bro. And if people w could see how I got to, like even just sitting here today talking to you is like, it's such an opportunity and blessing for me that you're willing to give me your time. If people could see how I got here and the shit that I went through, I guarantee you it'd be a total, total different story. And I, some of my friends that are also in the public eye that are, are much more fucked than me. <laughs> They get off scotch free. Oh, he's such a beautiful guy, he's such yeah. a like a lovely person. And I'm like, how the fuck are you getting? How are you not getting? <laughs> you know. But um, I, I think one thing for me is like a lot of people have a perception of me, and I, I'm, I'm I've always said, you, you give me an opportunity, and I'll I'll get like I've I've had some amazing jobs in my life, and I've had no experience whatsoever. Like it's just off straight off my, uh, my, my, my people building skills, like my relationship building skills. Um, and yeah, but it's a, it's a good and a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's good and a bad thing. Cause you can bring a lot of bridges if you don't, if you're not consistent with shit, you know? So yeah. Like with those opportunities that you've got in, like what, like for, let's talk about, for example, we won't spend long on it, but that, that job managing like a massive sales team. Yeah. When you're actually in a role, like how, what was that experience like for you? I imagine you had to take it seriously, work for such a big company, training so many people. Well, what is, what was that version of like Jordan Simi like? That version of Jordan Simi, that was most likely the happiest I've been in my life. So I never went out, never partied, never, never drunk. Um, I was, in a relation, long-term relationship and how I got that job actually, um, they weren't going to give it to me. <laughs> they, they actually turned me down cause I swore in my, my interview <laughs> and it was a group interview too. I swore in the group interview and I couldn't take no for an answer cause the gym that I wanted to work at was right across the road from me. And I kept going over and I was like, man, just listen, give me an opportunity. I'll work for free. Um, you know, I want to learn off you, blah, blah, blah. I'll work as a receptionist. And I think in my first month, he got, finally goes, all right, I'll give you a job. My first month, I think, I think I sold like 250 memberships. And every month then on, I would sell over 100 gym memberships a month. And I worked as a membership consultant for like six to eight months. And then I became the sales manager of Randwick Fitness First and then sales manager of Bondi, the both Bondi Fitness First clubs and then assistant club manager. and then. Sell like sales manager to where they send me to like failing clubs and I teach the new sales sales teams and it went on like that for ages. Um, 
and the money was crazy. Like six figures, 22 years old. I, that was probably the happiest time of my life. And I felt there was purpose there, you know? Um, and there was always, there was always a, a carrot in front of me. So I was just wanting to just keep progressing, pr- keep progressing. Went through that break, uh, breakup with my ex at the time, uh, my partner at the time. And it sort of killed something inside of me. Like it, something died inside of me where I was like, it hurt badly. Like it, it just hurt. Like it was almost like a giving up moment for me. Cause I'd been so resilient over my childhood and my teen years. I was sort of like, fuck, fuck it. Like, fuck this. I give up. Like I give up. Like how, how many times do you have to, and I didn't, I didn't have any family around me. Like I didn't have, don't have any family in Sydney. Didn't have any family in Australia really that I could lean on at all. Like, um, so there was no advice coming through. There was no advice or there was no one that I could go stay over at my auntie and uncle's house and go have a chat about life or, you know, what should I do in this instance? My, my, my dad wasn't in my life. It was like, so it was a hard time. I had to make decisions on my own and you know, were they the right decisions? I don't know. You, you always look back and you go, everything happens for a reason. I think that I could have handled myself a lot better, but hindsight's a bitch, you know what I mean? So right now I'm like just fucking getting after it and making up for lost time with people that, for, for people that matter. <laughs> All right, guys, just quickly, I've got some news. I've spent close to the past 18 months building the ultimate program that takes you through the complete process, and I mean the complete process of launching and scaling your very own e-commerce brand from zero all the way up to a million dollars plus per year. And now with this program, what you're going to get access to is 15 modules with over 100 training videos and 23 hours of in-depth content, taking you through everything you need to know to build a successful e-com brand. And this is the important part. This isn't just stuff that you can look up on YouTube. This is stuff I've taken from real lessons and experiences building Happy Skin Co. from zero all the way up to an eight figure per year brand. You're going to get access to loads of custom tools, templates and calculators that I've used to build and run Happy Skin Co. There's going to be one-on-one mentoring with myself and other expert coaches. And there's also weekly group Q&A calls with myself to make sure you're feeling completely supported throughout the entire process. And now what I've learned from consulting to everyone from people starting their very first e-commerce brand all the way up to brands already doing seven figures plus per year is that there's a process and a framework to follow if you want to be successful with e-com. Now, if this is something you're interested in, hit the link below and go to join.viralbrandbuilder.com. All the information's there and you can book a call directly with me. Otherwise, send me a DM and we can chat there. Anyway, let's get back to the pod. You, you said something that like you, you were being resilient for so long and this like arguably the biggest, most important thing in your life gets ripped away. Yeah. And you can't, like hold it all together anymore. And I know you've, you've been through a lot of uh, childhood trauma. We all have, it's, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's yeah. like, and at that point you were being resilient for so long. Had you not based and truly healed from that stuff at that point in your life? Well, to, bro, to be fair, uh, I've only just recently, uh, I'd never realized, like I'd, I'd always just put it behind closed doors, put it behind closed doors. And I thought, okay, yeah, I'm cool. I'm good. I'm, I'm good and, and everything's good, but I didn't, I, I, I didn't realize that it, it was seeping into my relationships. It was seeping into the way that I reacted to things. It was seeping in to the way I, I communicated with people, the way I carried myself, the way that I would go out and party and, and it was all very reckless. And without even knowing, I was like, these people are going to leave me like, well, um, you know, I'm not going to keep this job or I'm not going to. And I, and I had this reckless mentality of like, oh, fuck it, whatever, who gives a shit? Like it's all going to go to shit anyways, without actually knowing that. And I've only just real recently started to go, oh shit. Like I see now, I, I feel it now. So I'm, you know, I'm getting help for all that jazz. And, um, but yeah, it, it sucks though. You look back and you go, fuck man. You know, what would life would have been like if I had realized this earlier or taken people's advice, you know, but, um, you know, fuck them now. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Like, but bro, you know that, what I mean? That, that journey that you go on though with like, it's, it's such a, like, I used to in a way not agree with it that like everyone had childhood trauma. Cause I'm like for fucking up until honestly, probably a year ago, I yeah. didn't think I had any childhood trauma. I thought I was yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Like legit, I thought I was so sweet, but like sometimes it takes like life presenting 
you a different challenge that you've never been presented before to realize yeah. all your fucking shortcomings and yeah. like just realizing it is the first step. Like we're both, I'm, I'm 29, about to turn 30, similar age to you. It's like yeah. we're around 30, you start dealing with all that shit. Yeah. It's like, bro, there's no, there's no playbook on how, how to handle all the shit or how to navigate through it. But the fact that at least you're fucking facing that shit. hundred. And some people just run from it their whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and it's like, well, I, it's not even like a, I don't, I don't go, oh, poor me and my situations. Cause everyone's situation is exactly the same. If it affects you, the, the exact same, you know what I mean? So I never look at it like that. I just, I try to be, I try to slow down. And that was like, the seven months, I just wanted to slow down and look at my life almost from like a bird's eye view and go, all right, who do I want to be in my life? Who do, how do I want to, how do I want people to perceive me? How do I want my family to uh, accept me? You know, how do I want my relationship with my family to be? So it's been hard because I'm always like quite a go-getter, but um, it's been good though. And as we was talking about before we got on the podcast, I'm in a position now where uh, I've realized who fuck with me and who don't fuck with me. And <laughs> I know it's bad, but like uh, I, one thing that motivates me is like, is proving people wrong. And everyone's like, oh, you should do it for yourself. But I look now and I'm like, all right, you didn't fuck with me. You didn't like this brand, this, this person didn't reach out to me. And I understand everyone has their own life going on, but, you know, when, when you don't have anything to offer and you see the people around you, that that's, that's when you know, okay, that's who I need to give my time to. That's who I need to fucking have their backs and when they're in time of need, you know? Um, so seven months I've, I've seen who's been there and who hasn't. And now I'm like, okay, cool. Like keep that in mind. I feel like almost every super ambitious person, um, that wants to achieve a lot in their life. I've got a theory, like I think nearly like, let's say a hundred percent of them, it started based on some insecurity that they wanted yeah. to overcome. Yeah. Like I, I've realized, like I've, I've, again, and this is something I'm reflecting on, like why, why do I have, why do I feel like I have to fucking be this person, yeah. do all these things. And then it comes down to a yeah. fucking moment where you, you felt insecure or not enough in yeah. something and it fucking yeah. it happens so early on in your life that fucking one thing leads to another You're 30 years old. You don't yeah. even realize why you are this way, but like, Fuck man, it's 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 crazy that journey that people go on and like unpacking this shit and learning this stuff is like it's a, it's a never ending process. And I want to ask you something. You said, I, like you've been thinking about who you want to be and who who you who you want your family to look at you as. Like yeah. let's say, Jordan to me in five years, what what are some of like the character traits that that man has compared to now? Um, the character traits. I uh, so in five years time, I want. I want my family to be able to come to me in the time of need. You know what I mean? Like I want my family and friends to be able to come out to me if they need time, money, energy. I want to be able to give them that without losing my own. I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to be able to help people without losing a part of myself. And I think that's been a massive issue in my life is that I've always put, not always, but I've put a lot of people first back in the day and it's fucked me because I haven't, I've, you know, you're giving people your last dollar and, and you're like your, your last bit of time and energy. Yeah. They're Jordan in five years. I want to be, I want to be married. Um, I want to have an amazing relationship with my wife. Um, and yeah, just an amazing relationship with my kids. And, you know, I've, I've always, I've always had this like, always had this like premonition of like looking I'm out the back, back, back lawn and my kids are playing in the pool and my wife's there and family are there. It's, 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 it doesn't seem real to me because I've never really had that, but that's, that would, that's where I want to be. That's the five years time. I want to have my family's good, you know, wife's good, relationships good, garage silly. House by the lake. <laughs> you know you, what I mean? Do you visualize much? Is that is that part I of do. your process? I do, bro. I visualize like uh, even just getting over here from New Zealand, getting out of the, the shit that I was in, the trouble growing up, all that jazz. Like I've visualized everything to getting here. And I'm so I'm so close to just getting 
getting to where I want to be. You know what I mean? Like even just like fighting, like fighting Justin Hodges and just being in the circles that I'm in and the people, the conversations that I'm having are so far from where I grew up that I visualized all that shit. Like I've, and I believe that I've always done that manifested everything my whole life. Yeah. So yeah. How, what was going through your head? Like for those three years when you were bouncing around couch to couch, not really having your own place, what got you through those moments? Did you still have that fucking faint vision of life's going to be different one day? Oh man, I remember, I remember one time I was in the middle of the, in the middle of nowhere in Kalgoorlie and I'd escaped this gang situation over in, from Perth and I would have been about 17 and I had like pretty much jumped in this random guy's ute to drive up to Kalgoorlie and fucking escape that. And I was sitting, he goes, oh, I've got a garage. And he goes like two or two other guys live, live in there. And I was like, okay. okay. He goes, that's all I can offer you. I'm like, okay, sweet. I remember sitting there, bro. And, um, the garage was fucked and it was hot, dusty, like red dirt everywhere. And I was sitting in that garage and I was yeah, 17 and I just started crying. I was like, fuck. I was like, this is fucked. Like, what am I doing here? Like, what the fuck is going on here? And I, I, all I could picture was just, yeah, getting out, getting out of there and surviving. And the, that's always, that's actually been the issue though, is I've always been like, I've got to survive. I've got to survive and not thrive. Mm. Like now it's time for me to thrive and for people around me to thrive. People who have actually had my back, like my boys, my family, and now it's time for me to be the leader I believe I am and bring people up around me now, like, and, and pay back the dues that, that for these people that have helped me. Why do you think it's so difficult for you to feel comfortable enough to fully put your roots down and be like, no, I'm safe. I'm staying. I'm going to build something in this place. I think for me, nothing has ever been stable in my life. So I've, I've, without even knowing it, I've just expected the worst and carried myself like the worst is going to happen. So it's always driven people around me away from me. So now I'm like, okay, fuck that shit. I want Sydney to be my home. I want Australia to be my home. Um, and, and now it's time to, to, like, I'm, I'm a leader. I believe I'm a leader. I've, I've, you know, had leadership roles, all that jazz, even in high school. And, uh, I've always had, I think it's, I've, I've had like imposter syndrome with that, but I am though. I, I, I know I am, I believe I am. And that's where my brand and everything's going to now. Like everything that I've been working on for these past seven months is going towards what I'm building next. And, and, and something that can be a difficult balance when you're navigating that like period of change is like, obviously we need to acknowledge that the childhood trauma is here or we've went through those experiences but also people can get into a habit of using that trauma as a crutch to fall back on yeah. and as an excuse for bad behavior. Yeah. Do you feel like you've done yeah. that at all? Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Like not to the extent, but, but the, the, the bad thing is, bro, like, you know, you, you, my issue wasn't I was blaming my childhood trauma. I was, I was actually, I was relying on other people to change me. Like, not like, not telling them to change me, but like I would like my ex and I, like she's an amazing person killing and killing it. But it's like, you would always rely on them. I even Isaac, Corey, like, Oh, help me, help me. I was like, like you have to do the shit yourself. Like you actually have to do it yourself. You have to want to do it yourself. And I'd always be like, Oh, you know, poor me in regards to like, why are they not They're like, 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 fuck, like you can't, you can't rely on other people. You have to do it yourself. And I've realized that over the past seven months, even with the the breakup that I went through, it fucking crushed me to a point where now I don't even really talk to to many, many chicks. I might, you know, go on a date or whatever, but I can't remember the, can't tell you the last time I fucking had sex. (laughs) Like I've just closed off completely to find out who I really am, find out what these issues are like and build towards, as I said, helping my family and friends around me. That's my, that's what my main focus is now. Like you said, like it crushed you down so much that you would have felt close to a rock bottom, but like that's, 
now only once hitting that place, can you rebuild in, in, in the vision you want your life to be? <laughs> it's like I've hit rock bottom so many times and I kid you, I'm not laughing because it's funny. Like, well, it is fucking funny, but I hit rock bottom this time and I was like, like, this is the last time you'll hit rock bottom. I was like, this is the last time you're going to rely on others. This is the last time you're going to, you're going to hurt others because what happens is when you rely on other people and all those toxic traits come out and it's like you're hurting others around you because you're relying on them to change you, but you're not actually trying to change yourself. So I, I hit rock bottom this time and I was like, this is it. Like, this is it. No more running. You know, I was thinking, man, I'd go back to New Zealand and live a good life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like live an amazing life and just live in Queenstown, chill out. But I was like, nah, like, fuck, stop. Like you're not running anymore. Like this is it. You're not going, you're staying here. You're working through this shit and you're going to come outside a better person and you're going to affect others in a positive way. And I feel like when I keep that at the top of mind, that's what, that's what motivates me. Have you, do you know Jocko Willink? No. You, you, you oh, the should. tennis player. No, I'm just joking. I'm, <laughs> I'm fucking with you. <laughs> you should, um, I'll send it to you after on Instagram. You should read the, his book, uh, Extreme Ownership. Like oh, is that it. that army dude? Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. shaved head. He's yeah, got quite yeah. a deep voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do, I do sometimes listen to you, his podcast. Sometimes you need, especially someone like you, who like you like you said, you're the lover. You're like, you're like the fucking, the life of the party. Sometimes you need that person to say, stop being a fucking bitch. Yeah, like because like, like you, you 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 like you win everyone over with that charm, but you're only hurting yourself sometimes. Yeah. You got to be like Fuck you it. said, fucking no more running, bro. <laughs> no more running, no more running. Like no more running, no more trying to like make everyone love me. No more trying to like fit in. I really don't give a fuck about that shit no more. Mm. And what I realize is that people don't even fuck with me while I'm trying to be, you know, a nice, funny, charismatic, loving guy. People talk shit on my name as it is, you know what I mean? Even with that break, I was telling people saying, oh, you, you, people come up to me at events, like PR chicks and shit and go, oh, what happened with you and your ex? Did you cheat on her? And I'm like, what? like, no, like, but they have no proof leading to that. Like that people just have that perception of me anyways. Like I'm like, I'm a, a, a like an asshole. So I'm like, I'm not going to be an asshole, but I'm like, I'm not going to do things that are going to try and make others happy. I'm going to do shit that makes me happy. It makes me bread that looks after my family and friends. With that relationship, obviously, like you being you, her being her, like yes. it's going to get the media attention. Yeah. Um, do you feel like maybe it was just like a p element of like right girl, but you just weren't fucking ready? Yeah, bro. Honestly, oh, man, it's fucked that I'm saying this, but definitely right girl, um, wrong time, man. Like she – She's a fucking bee's knees, man. And honestly, since our since our breakup, it fucked me. Like <laughs> it really was like, oh, like it was it was just hard, bro. It was just hard, man. And it, I, I look back on it and I go, it was probably the first time that I genuinely loved someone. Like I, I've I've been in a few relationships and those relationships were hard, but I've 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 jumped to to like talking to other girls and you know dating apps, whatever, but. This one was like, shit, like it's been a few <laughs> months now and I'm still fucked from it. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it was a blessing in a way where I've just been able to sit by myself and like, <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I was saying to uh, one of my friends going through, who's gone through a similar situation and he's still single too. I'm like, is, do you ever recover from this? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, man, I'm not, I, I don't know. <laughs> Cause yeah. he's like, he still feels the same too, you know? So, um, but I think it needed to happen for me, man, because I've I've always died from Yash, you know. So it was like, now it's uh, it, it's it's sad, but I mean, it's it stopped me from like you know really wanting to meet anyone or talking to many girls or whatever. Like, so good, man, you growing up? Yeah. First love at thirty. Fuck, man. Yeah, it was what, nice. <laughs> what do you think was different about this relationship compared to the other ones? Um. This person was taught me a lot, a lot about uh, family, like amazing family, um, great work ethic, uh, backed me in a lot of things. A lot of people put me down, backed me. Um, just, just was like it was, 
it was just nice, bro. I felt like someone had me for once, had my back, you know, like there was no expectations. Just be a good person, you know. Um, so it was like, yeah, that was that was the nice that was a nice thing, and then that it showed me a bit of what I wanted in my future, you know. Like I, 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 I like just even the way her father was. Like he used to, just the way it just is, is very, like very strong, and I, it was nice to. So I sort of learned a lot of them because I, I I absorb a lot of knowledge of people without them asking or without asking. I just, I can read the room really well. And, you know, the way he carried himself and stuff was like, I was like, this is, this is like, he, he was a very beautiful father and this his family was everything. And I was like, that's, that's who I need to be. That's what I want to be. And I believe I will be that. Because you're so used to that, like survival instinct, you're always surviving, surviving, surviving. You feel like when life gets a little bit too easy, a little bit too comfortable, you don't want to do it. You're not planning on doing it, but something in the back of your head is just self-sabotaging and it's you crazy. can't control it. Yeah, it's it's quite fucked up actually. Like It's fucked. I've done it many times <coughs> in my life as well and it's like you you even know what the fuck's happening, but you can't. It's like you can't it's control like, it. Honestly, everything from me, everything bad in my life, Come from alcohol, and I know everyone's like, "Oh, you always talk about it." It's like, I just, yeah, it's like as you said, like you don't plan it; it just, just happens. But I mean, yeah, for me, man, it's just, it's just alcohol, bro. And I think now that I have a bit of a purpose, and I've got a lot of shit coming up that I want to achieve, um, you can't afford to get on the piss. Like you can't afford to go out and get hungover and all these. Would things. Would you ever so, just fucking like start? I'm gonna tuck and take a year off and just see what happens. Because it's like, mm. I'm like, so, like you want to enjoy life as well. Yeah. We're not robots. Like yeah. if, but fuck, like. I think that's where it's going, eh? I think that's where it's going. To be honest with you, I've been doing uh, like, I've been doing these uh, psychologist things mm. where, but it's just, uh, the thing is, is with the people that I hang out with and stuff, very social people, very, very culture, social, right? part of the yeah. culture, going to events and stuff like that. But this is the, one of the main reasons why I've started my own shit is because I'm just going to focus on my own businesses. I'm going to focus on my own products. I'm going to focus on my own content and I'm really going to pull back from doing anything with any other brands unless it's to do with the podcast. Um, and I think purpose keeps me, keeps me at bay purpose and uh, activity. So I think I know once I get a lot busier with work, I'm just going to pull back a lot. Do you feel like you've got clearer on your purpose in the last seven months? For sure. A lot of my mates are like, hurry up and do this and hurry up and do that. And I'm like, I don't want to. Like I just wanted to, I wanted to slow everything down and really look from a from a bird's eye view and see who actually fucks with me, mm. see who I am, have a bit of fun. And, um, you know, and as I said, the person that I'm going to be working with over the next couple of years now, I just, I just linked with him last week. So it's like, so the first time you've like hung out with him or? No, nah, him and I have like hung out yeah. heaps, got yeah, on okay. the piss heaps. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah, okay. But this is like, I message him randomly going, hey, we should start a podcast. He was actually having similar uh, thoughts and shit going on in his life, very similar to mine, on the day that I messaged him. Sort of sitting there like, what am I going to do? Da, da, da. He, he got the message and he was like, what the hell? Of course. Next day, boom, had a meeting, coffee, and now we've, we've, we're both in the same mindset. Because, because you're such a creative, emotional person. I don't mean emotional, like you're crying. Like you've, you really feel the highs and lows of life. Like having someone to keep you accountable because you, you let yourself down before you let someone else down. Hundred. Like if you know, we, okay, we're meeting today. <laughs> we're going to plan fucking the po whatever podcast content, business designs, whatever it may be. Yeah. Or like you're recording with someone. That's, you feel like that routine, like you said, you were happiest when you were in that life of yeah. working always carrot, 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 the next yeah. thing, the next thing. Do you feel like having that little bit more structure to like kind of like, you've got that creative juices that you keep, like that makes you you, that secret sauce that makes you like so special, but yeah. like having those few things to keep you on a bit more of like a guided path yeah. will help you? Yeah, yeah, that. And then also knowing that it's mine, knowing that it's mine and that, <clears throat> this is me, not the funny guy, the funny Jordan and stuff. You know, I like to joke around and all that shit, but that was, that was a, that was like a facade. Like I, I was 
I wasn't, that was me being scared of who I actually am and what I actually, what I actually fuck with and who I, what I actually believe in. It was like just being the funny guy to hide my own insecurities and my own goals and my, like, you know, not wanting to like stand out too much, but like, you know, jump in when it's time, like, fuck that now. Like I'm, I'm ready to, to be a leader. I'm ready to, to create businesses off the back of my content. I'm ready to go all in on this. And if it doesn't work, sweet, it doesn't work, but it will work. I believe it will work. And I just, I just feel like I'm on a, I believe that I'm on a different wave than a lot of other content creators here. And, and uh, I feel like, I, I feel like I have influence. I'm not an influencer. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 I want to create the wave, not ride it. And I'm sick and tired of like, trying to impress these brands and, you know, cut back on shit that I talk about and the, the way that I speak and, uh, and, and I, th- and the time is now, you know, and I'm going all in on it, Brian. I'm so fucking passionate about it because I think it's the perfect time here in Australia to, in the well, Australia to be doing this stuff, you know, and I don't think that anyone's doing it, what I'm about to, what I'm about to do and how I'm, how I'm about to attack everything. Have you done much with like art in your life? I didn't realize how good at art you fucking like, how good of an artist you are. No, I, I, I only started in uh, like lockdown when lockdown started. Started painting in lockdown. Yeah. There was a canvas in the garage and like we, I was in lockdown in Melbourne. So that was about three years ago, something like that. Three, Have four years ago. Have you seen any shit? Fuck, it's cool. And, and it's like, um, I painted this piece for my ex. Her grandfather passed away and- yeah, like, yeah, I painted this fucking piece for her and she throffed it. Anyways, uh, yeah, started to paint, started to paint. And I've never, yeah, never painted before, but I, I started to paint. And, um, you know, some of my pieces, <laughs> some of my pieces sell between like three to 5K. Fucking A. Um, so that was the same thing as well. Like a lot of people are like, why don't you do a show and stuff? And I'm like, imposter syndrome. Like it's not... I don't want to do it, but now I'm like, you know what? Yeah, fucking earth. I'm I'm the best artist in the world. That's my mentality. I'm the best artist in Australia. Why wouldn't I do a get, like show? And I've been to some of these exhibitions and they suck. Oh, I love your shit. Like, is it all the abstract kind of yeah. stuff that it's, yeah. that's your style? Yeah, it's my style. Like, I, I just see. paint anything I want, when I want, how I want. Do you have does a it, vision and then start, or does it just fucking come out as you go? Honestly, I listen to Kanye West Day and I just and I, I'll, I'll get. I'll have something like I, I drew this massive cow a while ago and someone bought it for like 10 grand and it was just off the back of a story. I heard of these cows getting lost at sea. <laughs> so it's fucking weird. But yeah, that's, that was, um, I just paint when I never, uh, it's funny, even in, even in the art world, how funny is it that, you know, it's supposed to be your own perception of what you see and believe in and people are like, Oh, you got to put it in this frame and you got to, put in this show, you got to do an exhibition and you've got to uh, put your name down here and you, oh, you can't copy that or you can't be that. And I'm like, it's just, it's hilarious. Like you can't <laughs> be yourself in any in walks art, of life. Of all, it's like, yeah, I don't, I will know. I don't want to put, put my name down the bottom right corner. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't want to put it on a frame and people just, oh, how long have you been doing art? Have you studied it? No. Why should I fucking study art? Like, why yeah. do I have to study art? You I are can, art. Exactly. Anyone can be an artist. People don't buy the art, they buy the artist. And that's with any, anything in life. Like, you know, obviously to some extent, but. But the value is always in the art. hundred percent. The value is in the artist. Like the value is in the artist. And I remember when people, when I started painting, people laugh, laugh, laugh. And then they go, Hey, you know, can I, can, can I have a piece? Like can <laughs> yeah. I buy a piece? And yeah, it was just, it's, it's, it's just, the, the art world is as funny as well because people like you have to do it this way and you have to paint this and use these colors and use this type of paint. I'm like, I don't have the money to fucking do that shit. So I'll paint with house paint. Has it been a theme throughout your entire life that like you find it hard to follow the norm? Yes. To be a box sticker? Yeah. Well, uh, where I grew up in, in South Auckland, uh, in Thompson street, um, uh, it was, it was a beautiful place and, but, and, and I, I grew up in like very, like there's a lot of gangs, a lot of little like street gangs and stuff like that. And, um, but I, it's like, it's, 
when I went to King's College, it was like I wasn't accepted there. So it was it was like I started to realize that like, you know, no matter what, that's just always going to be. You're like the black sheep. The black sheep, yeah. And, you know, like I just, I, I, I've I always wanted to do what I wanted to, want to do, you know, and I, I just can't. Even in the, I went to this uh, art, art um, exhibition the other day and it was just this whole last seven months have just been an, an eye of like, fuck it. Like, why am I trying to fit in and trying to, you know, be, people will message me on Instagram. I don't know who they are. And they'll go, oh man, this influencer stuff. Like, I feel like you're losing yourself. I'm like, I love fashion. I love the, to be able to go to Australian Fashion Week for me and to sit front row and see these shows. I learned so much about like I met some, met some of the designers, met photographers, met, I was around creative people. And then, you know, people were like, oh, you know, it's all influence and stuff. But I met a lot of designers and that's what I inspired to be. I want to design clothes. I want to create, create shit. So I'm like, why the fuck wouldn't I be there? Bro, Fashion Week was sick, man. It's such it a was sick experience. Bro, it was Honestly. it was sick, and people like shit on it and stuff like that. But for me, I'm like, I want to I want to do a show in Fashion Week. Yeah. Oh, fucking for sure. Do you know what I mean? And like, bro, what surprised me a little bit because like, obviously, I'm I'm on the business side, a bit of content. Like, I've worked with fucking with Happy Skin Go, thousands of fucking influencers in Australia, and I I went there this year expecting to be oh fuck, I'm in a, a bunch of fucking models and influencers. Yeah. Everyone's gonna think that's too cool, bro. Everyone was so fucking nice there. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone was in a good mood. Everyone yeah. was fucking nice. It's like people want to paint. From the out, like people like to paint people with like this vision of how they think it is, without ever giving people a a chance of really understanding what it is. Doesn't it suck? I get that. I've got that my whole life, my whole life, bro, my whole life. And it just, it, it just, like, yeah, even, even that, like, even people like, oh, yeah, you're, you're not being your authentic self. And I'm like, this is actually me being myself. I love fashion. I love art. I love creating. I love meeting new people. This being the funny guy who goes out and gets fucked up and talks about hooking up with chicks, that's a facade. Like, so if you don't fuck with me, unfollow. If you do, follow. I love you know it. what I mean? But yeah, man, that 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 fashion week was like a massive eye opener for me. And I I try and chase things that make me step out of my comfort zone, right? So me, I'm like, I want to be in fashion week. I want to do a show in fashion week. People are like, oh man, you don't you don't even design shit. And I'm like, well, I just started painting two years ago, and fucking people are buying them for ten grand and <laughs> yeah. shit. Like, so it's like, why why can't I? Don't limit anything, bro. No honestly. Way. Like I said that word when I introduced you, enigma. Like you are a bit of enigma. Like you're hard to understand. Like there's a mysteriousness about you, but I feel like that's what attracts people. Just fucking <laughs> don't ever try and conform. No, and it's it's like, Pete. Oh man, I get so fucking worked up about this. It's like, it's fucking yeah. It's like it's like. People, you obviously you want to find something that you know that you're passionate about and you stick with, but I can't. I love everything. I want to do everything, and obviously, fashion. I found I found a lot a home in fashion and art, and you know, podcasting content. So I found a I've found a home there. But I'm always looking at shit like as a canvas. That's how I look at stuff now, and I've and I've realized that that's just me. And instead of going, oh, I need to settle down, and I need to. Like, no, okay, well, what? just chop trying to be in relationships right now, chop all that stuff, stuff. I try to look at everything now as a canvas and I'm an artist and that's that's where I'm going to. That's where that's that's what I've been working on these last seven months. And I can't wait to fucking show people. Mm. And Australia and New Zealand, they go a long, long way. And I think New Zealand's more ahead of Australia in this regard. Australia's very old fashioned with a lot of things. There's a lot, I mean? there's a lot of amazing things happening in New Zealand. Uh, I think a lot, a lot of people, there are like really cultured as well. And then they're like, they're, mo- they're moving quicker than they are he- over there in New Zealand. Than they are. So, I mean, no disrespect. Don't go canceling me, you fucking weirdos. <laughs> but yeah. Bro, no, that's the thing about Australia, man. Like, I, Australia will always be home, obviously. I was born yeah. here. Um, but it's like there's a lot of things we uh, this country does really, really well in terms of like it's amazing, it's clean, it's safe. But like if you want to push yourself, be super creative, be super ambitious, like it's not just the environment, it's the people that don't really encourage that here. Like yeah. as soon as you take a big step out of the box, it's like that what's a crab fucking theory. Yeah. Like, everyone wants to drag back in and be like, no, 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 like – I'm not chasing my dream. So you you don't go and do all that. It's like, no, bro, you go fucking chat. You figure out what it is that's going to light you up, fill up your cup and figure out a way to fucking make that your, 
make that your life. And that that's why I've got the podcast and that's why I help so many people start businesses because in Australia, probably similarly in NZ, I'm sure you go to school, you learn all this bullshit that no one cares about, then you either get a trade or you go to uni and you just fucking follow this path and it takes you to your late 20s or your 30s to you realize I'm so fucking unhappy. Yeah. What am I doing with my yeah. life? Bro, 100% man. Um, I feel like I've gone through all that shit in my early 20s. So now I'm on the other end and I, man, I just, I can't, I can't like stress enough how excited I am for these next, uh, these, the, this next like 12 months because I, I feel like it's going to really, it's going to really like set a tone of like me being myself and, and enticing others to do the same, you know? Because I, I still feel like a lot of, a lot of guys here, like tall poppy syndrome, you know? Oh, what the fuck? Like he paints his nails and this and that. It's like, I, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited, man. I, why do you think, still. why do you think that makes some people uncomfortable? Like, oh, he's fucking out there. He paints his nails. Well, like, obviously with the whole, like, Andrew Tate stuff and all that masculine energy and all that jazz, like, I get it. I get it. Um, But my thing is, like, like, I'm a boxer as well. Like, I've I've been training for the past two years pretty much now. Like, so anyone that says it to me face to face, (laughs) I'm like, well, fight me then. And then they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, come to my boxing gym and fight me. They're like. Well, no, you're a you're a professional. I'm like, well, then shut the fuck yeah. up, then. To me, bro, with the whole stuff, like, I, 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 in in a sense, like, I uh, agree. Like, you know how, like, you got to be careful what you say, what you do, yeah. Because you get cancelled. Like, I get like that, the, the masculinity thing, whatever. Likewise, that's a whole other fucking yeah. debate. But to me, the most masculine thing is to be able to fuck. If you want to fucking paint your nails, to paint your nails and own it. Hundred percent. That's what's fucking being masculine. You know what I mean? Just be not giving a fuck. And doing what you want and not letting anyone to tell you what to do. 100%. That's what, like the traditional sense of like being masculine to be, not fucking yep. following those orders, 100%. not conforming to those norms that you don't. I don't go agree tell with. everyone else to go paint their nails. I just mm. like I want to fucking paint my nails because that's just the way I am. Like I just want to do that. And to be honest with you, I was getting paint all over my fingers and shit anyway. So I was like, I'm just gonna paint my nails. And I tell you what, the ladies love it. <laughs> I'd fucking yeah. I, they I'm, love it. Like yeah. no matter what, no matter where I go, girls will be like, oh my God, I love your nails. So I'm like, thanks. They're like, that's so interesting. Why do you do it? And I'm like, well, just because I want to. And it's just a conversation starter. because I'm art, baby. That's I'm just art, art baby. <laughs> that's why I've been telling people my nickname is to just make it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, like with all that stuff you're doing, because I'm very much the same and, and there's a reason why I'm like that, um, which is probably, I don't know if I want to talk about it right now on the podcast because um, we'll save it. Um, but like wanting to do so many things and you, and you, and you love so many things and you're excited about so many things. It's like, yeah, I think I'm the same and we can't switch that off. Like if we just tried to do one thing all day, every day, we'd probably get sick of it in six months and, yeah. and fucking hate it. Yeah. But with that world you're building, you're creating for yourself. So fashion, art, fucking content, like, content, yeah. like how, how do you envision putting it, bring it all together in your own way? So like, yeah, you might be doing three or four different things, but they're actually all supporting each other and building towards this like grand yeah. vision. Yeah. So the podcast for me is what I was always told, tell my other friends that are content creators is all that like TikTok, like reels and all that shit. That shit doesn't really last forever. Right. Like, especially when you get older, people die down from reaction videos and, and all that. Like the, the new wave of content creators come through. So the idea is for me is, is, to to build um to build the podcast again and realize realizing that it's a foundation for everything else so it's it's almost uh top of funnel for people to go oh these guys are these guys are actually funny they're not just you know wankers that post photos of clothes and all that shit like these guys are actually really funny they talk about mental health they talk about lifestyle they talk about masculinity they talk to females about love talk about heartbreak. They talk about everything. So it's top of funnel for people to get to know you and get to know the brand. And then they start digging a little deeper. Oh, cool. They, uh, whether it be uh, vlogs, whether it be products, like, but for me, starting the podcast is just the foundation of the company to get people in the door. And then everything else is, I never really had anything else ready to go. It was just a podcast. So people come in and go, oh shit, like, you know, sell products here and there, sell merch here and there, sell whatever it may be here and there, vlogs here and there. It was just never organized. So I I was t- 
telling my my new business partner now, I want to create uh, projects and companies off the back end of our platforms that we can break away and it's not a part of us anymore. You know what I mean? Because that's what I was trying. That's what I realized when we we're like, Ross and a few reds. What do you want to do? Like, I, we want to create businesses that we can like sell off off the back end of it, whether it be grooming products or like men's hair gel or whatever the fuck it may be, you know? So, yeah. Well, it's like something that I still remember from my conversation when we had the ice on the podcast was like a lot of people build brands first and content later. Yeah. It's like this is the content first model, build yeah. the content, build the audience, and then you can do whatever you want with it. <coughs> well, the thing is when you have, when you, sorry for coughing everyone as well. Fucking. When I get, we'll, we'll try to get Joe to bleep some sorry, of that, but if sorry, not, sorry, sorry guys. I'm so sorry. It's um, freezing. It's dusty. There's oh, shit mate, everywhere. Yeah. I, I get the worst hay fever and it fucks me. But you push through for everyone. Mate, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I was late. Um, yeah, a lot of people do that. And listen, whatever works, whatever works for you, works for you. But yeah, when you have an emotional buy and emotional connection to your listeners and viewers, it's a lot easier to sell products. It's a lot because they, they know who you are, they believe in you um, and they want to back you, you know, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I, I didn't really appreciate it as much as I, uh, when I, when, it, when, cause we were making a lot of money off merch and all that jazz, didn't appreciate it, didn't understand it now in reflection and learning a lot about how all that side of things work. It's, it's a beautiful thing, you know. Well, bro, I was saying this to someone recently. It's like, I've only got 11,000 followers or something. We, I opened um, like my e-com mentoring program to how to build a brand, like what I've done a month ago. I've got 11,000 followers. I haven't stopped jumping on calls with people. And it's predominantly from the podcast. It's like people build such a great relationship with you. You have such an, like you said, influence, not an influencer. Like yeah. there's a difference between like earning someone's like, yeah, and, and, and to, to be able to influence them in the right way, rather than just like doing all this fucking fake bullshit that yeah. doesn't that doesn't last. That's very topical. That's here one minute, gone the next. Um, so I understand all that. I want to ask about one other thing before we start start to wrap up and explore. I know you spoke about it recently. You've been public with it. You mentioned obviously you've been seeing uh, like a psychologist and, and doing the work lately and, and processing all this stuff. How our yeah. brain works, why we are the way we are, um, and Recently, you in the in this like seven month you've had off, you got diagnosed with bipolar. Yeah, has that been like a real eye opener for you? As in, like it's answered a lot of questions for you, and it makes things make a lot more sense after that. Yeah, it did. Um, it was it was like I was like, fuck, like the writing was on the wall. Probably should have went and got checked up and stuff a long time ago. But you know, hindsight's a bitch. I think that's another reason why I haven't pursued any other type of uh, relationship with a female because I've decided that uh, it scares me to. It really does. Like I, I, I feel like that uneasiness is like I would love to. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to, but it's 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 very scary for me now. Like I, I just I don't know if I can open up like that again. So, um, uh, I've made peace with that. I'm I'm just crazy. <laughs> and I need to like I'm on medication and all that jazz and it's helped me out a lot but it has blocked a lot of my confidence has been a bit shot I've, these last seven months have just me been building my confidence back up um, and it's been a, like a, a really creative blocker too um, which has sucked um, but and I have have found a lot of stability within my day-to-day things. Highs and lows. Highs and lows because the, the highs were high and the lows were like really, really low. And, yeah, it was just like it sucks. But it's like huh, some days I still – sometimes I'll be like, no, nah, man, everyone else is crazy, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but does it like sometimes when you're not feeling great – I know you're on, on medication now, which helps, but some like getting that – from some expert that says, hey, this is likely why, you know, you experience these highs and lows. Does that help you, that diagnosis, be kinder to yourself and cut yourself some slack that, hey, it's just, it's not my fault that I'm having these highs and lows? Like, has it helped you be kinder to yourself? No, no, it hasn't. 
I'm actually harder on myself because when these when these things arise and stuff, I'm like, I really, really fight within myself to go, don't do this. I really fight with myself, don't like to not do certain things, not think a certain way. But that's why this path for me, these next, these last seven months, what I've been working on is so important to me because that's all I've put my energy in. As I said, I've, I've locked off trying to meet females. I've locked off like partying. I'll go out here and there, but nothing crazy. I, I've, I've, I know it sounds weird, but I've become obsessed with, with what I've got coming up. And it's, uh, it's a bit, scary because I'm like I don't have really have any other emotion towards anything else like it's and I don't know if it if it's a good thing or a bad thing but I'm just going with it now so that focus can be an extremely powerful thing yeah yeah and I'm like I'm I'm excited I'm excited but I'm also like I'm also like shit is this how I'm going to be for the rest of my life you know because I've it's almost it's almost like I, I tell you this is like that last relationship because I've always been a relationship person, like leaning on someone to that last relationship for me was the best person that I could ever be with. And now that that, that didn't work out for me, I'm like, there's no one else that I'll meet that I will look at like that ever again. So it's like now I have, I've shut off all ever, any other emotion, shut it all off. Like I, I'm very easy at doing that putting my walls up. All I want to do now is focus on this. And as I said, the medication, the whole bipolar, it sucks because it sucks because I, I just, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to be with someone like for a while, for a while until I've, so it's just, it's a scary bro. It's scary. You know, like you, I don't want to, I don't want to have someone put up with that shit. Like, I'd rather just deal with it with myself and be around my family, my friends, and they're somewhat stuck with me. So it's like I just, I just, I'm a bit scared to go into a relationship again. And and yeah, you you said you're like you said you're you're, you're scared to get get into another relationship. Are you more scared of hurting yourself or hurting them? Uh, hurting them, hurting, hurting people. Yeah, hurting them. Not like in physical manner, but just like it's draining. Like it's draining being with someone, I've had people that are bipolar in my family and it's fucking draining. Like draining from like looking in the mirror as well because it's like some days I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, and some days I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, this is what I want to do. And then people around me are like, what? You just said you hated doing that. <laughs> like, So it's like, uh, it, it, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But I think it's just learning, learning for me. Yeah, but that, that's that's what I mean. It's like. This diagnosis, and I know it's so early on and like fucking you, like you will be living your whole life trying to get better yeah, at dealing yeah, with this yeah. shit. But it's like, in my opinion, you should be cutting yourself some psych and treating yourself kind because there's a fucking, you're not like yeah. just fucking just doing it for to be a fucking shithead. You know what I mean? There's a reason for it. And it's like understanding that and accepting that might make it easier. Like I'm not a fucking yeah. a psychologist. Yeah. You know what no, I mean? No, no, I get you. I get you. I think I've, I'm, I'm easier myself with it, but- I think I look back now and I go, there's certain people in my life that were like, yo, like, I think you know, you need to potentially, and, and I would take, so I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not crazy, you know, like, and. But you say crazy, it's not crazy. Not crazy, <laughs> but man, I'm crazy. Yeah, but crazy <laughs> I'm can crazy be good. on, and then that on top. <laughs> yeah. So bipolar is the cream. Um, the little cherry on yeah, top that is yeah, Jordan yeah. to me. So I, um, yeah, so with, with, with that, with the. I, it's not that I'm hard on myself. I just, there's, there's people that I need to reconnect with that have pointed me in certain directions to go get help that I need to rebuild bridges with and not like not to be friends and all that shit. Mostly just to apologize and stuff. Heal you know? and move on. Heal and move on. So yeah. It's, it's like with that stuff, bro, it's like, yeah, you can say it sucks. It's annoying that, that you have to deal with that, but you can probably almost guarantee without that, you wouldn't be this creative person that you no are. No way. You look Sometimes. at all, all the most successful creative fucking artists. They all fucking struggle yeah, all with fucked, mental yeah. health shit in different yeah. ways because <laughs> fuck it's the price to pay for creativity. 100%. Your brain works differently. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And a fuck. 
darkest thing as well, you know, sure. because I find that, as I said, my, my confidence, my creativity come a lot from me just being like, oh, like crazy. Yeah. And then, so now that I've like watered that down, it's like I've really got to like fight for it, you know, but that's what the seven months was about, man, slowing down and just finding that dog in me without, you know, needing to be all over the shop. And I'm fucking so excited to just get after it, man. I, I've, I've been I've been holding on for a long time, going through a really hard time financially, mentally. Like not don't like not in a feel sorry for me way, but just like you know, close calls, close calls, yeah. close calls. So, and I think um, that will make the, these next this next part of my journey a lot a lot nicer. Like a more worth it, you know. With that, like, yeah, it's 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 both. It's also a blessing, but it can, can there's darkness that comes with that as well. Is so it just fucking? Who knows? There's no like fucking manual on how to navigate exactly. this shit. So I'm excited to see all the shit that you do coming up. Like, I spent a bit of time doing my research on you, looking at your art. I'm so sorry about this coughing, brother. It's all G. It's all G. Um, one last thing I wanted to ask you about. Um. I, uh, I've been doing martial arts for eight years. Like I'm a, I'm a third degree black belt in, in, in Kung Fu. So I realize, yeah. I realize like how amazing the martial arts journey can be for someone. What, what has boxing starting that in the last couple of years done for your life? I'm telling you if anyone's going through like mental, like physical, like a breakup, whatever, any, when everyone does people message you and like, Hey man, I'm going through this. How do I, how do I change my life or whatever it may be? Start at a, at a boxing gym, start at a jujitsu, start at a Muay Thai gym. Like everything else will work itself out. Legit bro. The power of martial arts. If you feel stuck in life, like you don't have a purpose direction, you're lacking yeah. in discipline. Yeah. It ticks so many fucking boxes. Bro, it's, it's crazy. Re it's rewarding. It's challenging. It's humbling. It's crazy. It's man. fucking crazy, man. You get put in your place too. Like I'm a big guy. And I, I've got guys like 60, 70 kgs like feeding me, you know, <laughs> and you you leave with just like you go out, you go, like, uh, yeah, if you're going through a hard time, that's my best, like best advice, like ma martial arts, boxing, all that jazz, like it's just such a, an amazing foundation for the way you can carry yourself for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You you, you can have to help you make decisions. Like boxing for me, I try to take – uh, take stuff that I've learned inside the ring and use it on the outside of in life where it's like, you know, pick your shots, um, you know, be wary, stay fit, um, you know, keep your hands up, like shit like that. You know, like I try to, I try to, and, and just the confidence you get from it, you know, you just the way you react to people, you know, when people try and put you down and you sort of like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, you can do something about it, but you choose not to. And having that option is such a powerful thing. Yeah, I know it's it's a different type of confidence. It's a different type of confidence than like if you're going out and you're chatting to a, to a, to to some woman at the bar, right? But I tell, I try and say this to people: it's like the confidence that you get from martial arts, like truly being so secure and safe in yourself. Like it's such an like it's such a freeing feeling. And I was never a fighter. I was never into that when I was young. Like I started. I would have been like 21, 22 when I started martial arts. And it's like, I, I, I like dress, you know, I don't, I don't look like a HK at all. I'm, yeah. I look like this fucking normal guy, yeah. tattoos and, and like quite thin. And people would never expect that from, from someone that looks like me, but it's like the confidence that you get just knowing that you can fuck someone up if you need to. Like, bro, it sounds crazy and it sounds, oh, that's super masculine. No, bro. No. It's just reality. Yeah. You get so much more confidence from being physically secure within yourself. Yeah. Like, you can't underestimate that. Now, in like, because as well. You don't I'm, walk around as well like, oh, I'm going to fucking beat no. everyone up. Like, you know, you get a few people that are like that. But, I mean, I heard this one time, what is, it's, it's, it's better to be a warrior in the garden than a gardener in the war, you know? Like, it, it's, and as you said, people are like, oh, that's so. Like, no, like, no, like, that's just, as men, that's to, to have that option and to not want, you know, just to 100%. say, I'm either going to, I can, I can either fight or I can't, I'm not going to fight, but not, but having the option of like, I can't, I can't fight, fight and I'm not going to fight. <laughs> what if you have to protect your family? Exactly. What if you have to protect your friends yourself? Mm -hmm. Like, but one thing I learned about in boxing and martial arts is looking at situations and just really like admiring the beauty of any situation. 
whether it be like an argument, whether it be a fight, whatever it may be, sort of slows things down for me. At, at where I, where, where I do my training. Um, so as I was saying, like I'm a black belt and like people hear black belt will think, fuck, like you're the highest it gets. That in, 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 in Kung Fu, what I do, that's like, it's high, but it's, there's this whole other thing after yeah. black belt, uh, which is called red sash. Mm. And like to become a red sash, absolute minimum you can be training is somewhere between like, did the math in my head, 10 years, yeah. right? Something yeah. got around that. And then each level, there's five stripes, each level is three years. So oh, it's like there's fuck. people with five, like all 20 years plus. Yeah. And like whenever they do a grading, when we do like little uh, grading, like they, they, they level up, get their next stripe. We always do like a presentation. And it's like uh, the head of our school, like introduce him and they're all fucking business owner, business owner, doctor, yeah. Like, yeah. fucking yeah. it bleeds into the rest of your life. It Martial really arts, like you said, fuck, if you're stuck in life, if you're not confident, bro, any guy, guy or girl, yeah. I'm telling you, martial arts can change your life. It can. With with the whole confidence piece, some people will see you and be like, no, nah, he's not struggling with confidence. Look at him. Like he's, he's that guy. What have you been doing? Like, is there anything you've been doing to try and rebuild that or refine that confidence again? Uh, I'll, you know what, I, 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 I'm still trying to find it because I, I kid you not, like I, like I always get these comments and people inbox me and I'll be out and about and people start yelling shit at me, like females, people having this perception of me. I felt like I've been blacklisted from certain companies and people that used to fuck with me don't fuck with me anymore. <clears throat> so it really took it hurts like, cause I'm an emotional guy. It hurts that people think certain things of me, but uh, in regards to confidence, it was like sitting with myself and going, you know, what did I do to even be able just to be sitting in Rose Bay across the road from the water, across the road from the golf course, you know, being able to go play golf, go for a, a swim on, in, in the harbour or what, you know what I mean? Being in that very spot, I'd, I sit there and I'm like, I wasn't meant to make it this far. So I'm like, that's what rebuilds my confidence because I never cared what anyone else thought of me back in the day. I never give a shit. I never thought like, I never thought, oh, this is what they're going to think of me. This is what they're going to think of me. I'm going to get cancelled. It was like I had to do it to, to survive, like living on the streets and stuff. And that's where I'm trying to, I put myself back there and I'm like, I don't mean it disrespectfully, but, but fuck everyone else. Like I love everyone, but fuck everyone else. I'm not doing, I, I, I felt like I had started to do things to make other people happy, to try and get this deal, to try and get invited to this, to try and meet this person and learn off this person. But now it's like, fuck everyone else. I'm going to focus on my shit, the people around me. And it's not even a confidence. It's more so like, I've, I've realized that I have to be like this to bring up my family and friends around me. Cause if I don't, then I let them down. I let down people who have sacrificed things for me. So it's not even like a confidence of like, yeah, I'm the man. It's like, I have to be the man. I want to be the man, but I have to be the man because I've got people relying on me that need me to do this. So it's like, stop being a bitch. Stop you know, feeling sorry for yourself all the time and get after it. Because if you don't, then you let people around you down. Do you ever, when you're sitting at Rose Bay with coffee in your hand, looking at the water, do you ever think back to that garage in Kalgoorlie covered in dust, fucking have nowhere to go, no one I just remembered about it today, to be honest with you. Like I've done it before as well, but yeah. Isn't it fucking crazy how far you've come? It is crazy, bro. It is crazy. And I was sitting there eating French French um, crepes yesterday, like looking at the golf course. And I was like, I was like, fuck, like I'm him. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like life can't be that bad, bro. Life honestly. can't be that bad. Life can't be that bad, man. And, um, you know, and, and one thing I, I, the, 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 my purpose that I've found and that I've, I've been working on these past few months is like, who do I want to be remembered as in the five year in five years time? I, how do I want people to look at me? And it's not what I've made. It's not how much money I've made. It's not the homes I have or the cars or whatever it may be but it's the people that I've affected and helping people is like so important to me. Right. But it's like my boss, my old boss back in the day used to say, you can't help anyone else unless you help yourself. Cause if you've, you're giving your last bit of money 
How are you going to pay your rent? You're giving your last bit of food. How are you going to eat? And it's like you have to be selfish. So I've been selfish and like these next few months, these next, well, next year is going to be, it's going to be um, a product of that, you know. When you were at the 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 low days um, of this, you know, last six, seven months where you've been going through all of that stuff, what got you through the darkest moments? I'll be honest with you, man. Like, oh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say because you don't want to like, I, I'm, I'm not, not even, oh, it's, it's hard to say, bro. Cause I would sit there. It's, oh, it's, <laughs> it's fucking tough to say. I would sit there in my house cause I live by myself and like, it makes me fucking pretty emotional now thinking about it. Like, oh, sorry. Try not to fucking cry. Uh, it was hard, bro, because I, like, I would, I can, I did think about committing suicide. Like, I, I thought about it. I was like, fuck, you know, like, it was, it was a tough situation because I felt like I'd lost everyone around me, like the people that mattered the most. And the, uh, the passion that I had for YKTR and shit, like, it, it was gone. Sorry, it's fucking tough. <laughs> you spoke about your biggest regret on the podcast you recorded with Ice a couple of months ago. Do you feel like you going through that experience and realizing all the devastation that it left with you, your family for, for, for years, decades to yeah. come, do you feel like that was part of the, also like one of the reasons that you feel like you, you could never put people through that because you know what gets left behind? Yeah, for sure. I, I like I'd sit there for fucking I didn't leave the house for days and I'd just cry, cry, like, you know, think about, you know, everyone that I'd let down around me. And I was like, fuck, maybe you know, maybe if I'm not here, then fuck, fuck it. I just need to see see people cry. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. Like people don't realize what people are going through. <laughs> yeah, it was like I'd I'd sit there and I'd go, fuck, like let let Sammy down. Fuck. Sorry. Show this shit to me. It's real, bro. We all, we all have those, Sorry. you know, moments. Let let Sammy down. Let, you know, let what the boys from YKTI down. You know, let family down. And I'm like, fuck, man, I'm sick and tired of doing this. And I was like, man, maybe this is just who I am, you know. And then I was like, maybe it's best if I'm not in these guys' lives. So, <sighs> But it's like as much as you might in your – Bad periods annoy people. Everyone fucking loves you to death, man. Yeah, it's like I, that's, I that's understand. the thing. Like we all, everyone fucking loves you to death, bro. Yeah, it's like I get that. I get that, and and I wrestled with the idea for a, for a while. Like I I didn't leave home yeah for like five ten days, and uh, I was like, this is just a wake up call for me to just stop hurting people around me, you know, and you know, it was hard. It was hard because. That's all, like, it, was, it just kept happening. So I'd lost everything at one time, and I was like, I've done it again. <laughs> and, like, I didn't have everything. Like, it's happened to me twice now. But I felt like I'd lost everything again. And I was like, shit. Uh, and thankfully, you know, thankfully I'm, I'm mates with, you know, Ice and Normie and Chico still. You know, there's a lot of people that I still want to rebuild relationships with. But, yeah, it was, uh, it was fucked, bro. It was fucking, it was hard. It's so, like. You, the fact that you've not only thought about it, but said it openly, like, I feel like that's such a fucking step in the right direction, yeah. you know? Yeah. And like, and that's where I, I sort of got to a point where I was like, bro, fuck, fuck trying to make other people happy, you know? Like trying to, apart from the people that matter, like who cares about trying to, to fit in, like how I got here, how I got to where I am today is like, by just getting after it and believing in myself, you know, and I just felt like I let a lot of people around me contra like like sorry, like affect who I was as a person. And I was making decisions based on making other people happy. Which is fucking not it's not the way I that's not the way I roll, you know, and it, it affected me. But yeah, man, it was uh you know, sitting sitting at home uh, you know, part of this seven months, like sitting there and just going like Shit, like, 
you know, what or what's next, you know, and I, I just what I've made what I've what I've made um peace with is that I I will I'll never have people to go to for advice really. Like I would never have like that family vibes where I'll go have fucking you know, a barbecue at my family's house on a Sunday and like go Christmas and all that shit. Like there's family there to do it with, but it's just not it's so far gone from me. Like I need to create it. Mm. So yeah, that's it's like that vision you had. Exactly right, man. That's uh that's that's I, I kid you not, like that that's so real for me and I can't wait for the moment. It'll come. But I've shut off to that right for now. I'm sorry to cry, man. I oh, you just brought back some bad memories, you know. It was a tough time. It was a tough time and and as you said, like being the funny guy and stuff, like I would like thank God for my my two specific friends. Yeah, like they're annoying as fuck. Like they're weird as hell. But you know, and, and a lot of people have a certain perception of them. I won't name their names, but like these guys, like anything I needed, anything I need. And ice as well. Like a lot of people don't understand. Like I, I call on ice to do anything for me. If anything happened to me, that he would be there for my family. Like that's what a lot of people don't understand. And then, yeah, it fuck. It was a tough time, man. I don't think I've ever cried on a fucking podcast before, eh? It's like as well. It's been tough, bro. All good, bro. Tough. People cry like it's it's real. What Whatever's real, that's what, yeah. you know, people need to have more real conversations so people can realize. And also it's like just because you're this fucking social media personality, you do something wrong, you say something wrong on a podcast, people try to cancel you, <laughs> their threats, neck yourself. I'm yeah. sure all that shit gets thrown up, but don't, people don't realize there's a fucking human being sitting mm. on the other side, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like the fact. It's cool. Yeah, bro. It's fucking like, uh, and the uh, fact that you didn't and, and you got through that. And I mean, I don't, I didn't fucking know you then. I hardly know you now, but it's like last time you hit rock bottom, I feel like you tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like maybe you wouldn't have the clarity you have this, this time. No, 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 exactly. It's different. It's a different. Yeah. It's so it, if I didn't go through that, then, and I've like, I've sat with it for like seven months, I, you know, and, it's been hard, bro. It's, it's actually really been hard and, and, uh, it's, and just losing that confidence and like you know, losing people that you actually genuinely love. Like that was the hardest thing for me. Like not, not having those people there during that time. I was like, fuck, like, am I always going to be like this? Am I always going to let people down? And, and that's why I didn't rush into doing another podcast straight away and you know, starting shit because I knew that I, at the time, I probably wasn't going to be 100 about it, you know, and be inconsistent. So, so I'm ready now. I'm and, ready now. And it's like you said that you feel like you've let people down, but in in a way, I feel like the people around you, the people like your fuck it, followers, your friends, like your, your friends, like because you're this funny guy and it's like you use humor to, you know, yeah. mask things. It's like even obviously I do my research and all the guests that come on. The, the episode um, with you and Jacko after you'd, you'd just broken up, it's like straight away joke. And like, I, I, I could, I watch it and I see how it's funny you, this Larry, and he's, <laughs> he's done it again. He's fucked yeah. it up. It's like, but if that's the way everyone treats you and like, and like not, not in a bad way, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but it's like, yeah. you've, it's built up this fucking thing. Sometimes it's like, nah, you're a fucking human. Yeah. As well, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it sucks, bro. It, it, it fucking, it would suck. Like it, it sucked, man, you know? And it was, uh, that's why I needed to pull away from all that shit because it was like, yeah, I'm the funny guy and I, 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 it just, it was getting deeper for me. Like it was like, what the hell's wrong with me? You know, like, mm. so even putting that stuff out there was just tough all the time, bro. And and you know, people, like, ugh, it, it was it was it was really draining, man. And I, I kid you not, bro. It was it was a pretty dark last few months. Um been real dark, you know, and, and, you know, I, I've, I've shut myself off to like feeling certain ways and shit now, but I, I'm ready to make a positive impact on people that have, have stayed with me. A lot of people have, a lot, a lot of people stopped talking to me. A lot of people stopped reaching out to me. Like no one reach out, reaches out to me, you know, 
Like, so it was hard. Like, it was hard because I'd always been the guy to reach out to everyone, you know, are you okay, blah, blah, blah. It's just, it, it's never really been reciprocated apart from like a certain, a certain bunch of people. So now for me, I'm like, okay, well, I need to be a man and provide and look after these people that have fucked with me and stuck with me this whole time. And that's what motivates me. That's what I found motiva- motivation in proving people wrong and also looking after the people that have looked after me, that care about me. And these last seven months have made that as clear as day. And everyone else, I'm like coming for your shit, you know. <laughs> respectfully. I can oath, respectfully. I'm curious now, like in when it's fresh and obviously you're a public person, you've got to acknowledge it. When when it's fresh and like you're laughing around and like everyone can see the funny side of how it was funny. Yeah. From the outside looking in. Yeah. With not not taking on the human perspective, okay. but yeah, yeah fucking okay, But you as a person, like I know you were laughing and smiling about it then, but what am, how are you feeling on the inside? Were you at that point? You were just blocking it away and you were truly fucking this laughing. Was, was what, what, like sorry? when you and Jacko were talking about the breakup on the podcast, oh. like, was it funny for you then or did it low key hurt underneath? Oh man. It, like it hurt. Like I, I would kid you not, like with my, my ex. Yeah. The recent breakup. Um, the recent breakup. Yeah. It fucking, yeah. It hurt, bro. It hurt because the joking around and stuff, but it, it hurt, man. It fucking it hurt, like still does to this day. Yeah. Like, but yeah, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. And, you know, sometimes if you love someone, you got to let them go, man. And that's just, that's just sure. what it is. And I've, I've got, I've got things that I need to do within myself, within my life that, you know, maybe one day when, you know, when all the boxes are ticked and all that jazz and things are good, then maybe, but, who knows, man? Who knows? But you got to, like, if you love someone, you just got to let them go if you know you're not not good for them. So that's just what I've made peace with. But, yeah, uh, that's what I needed to get away with, joking around all the time yeah. and, you know, being a larrikin. That's just, uh, that's who I am. But when I'm that guy, that's it's a dangerous time for me. Like, yeah. it's very, like, fuck it, let's just roll it. Like, let's just you know, like, start a fire. It's like... Even like, even when you're not out on the piss and you're not drinking, like that's a side of you, but that's not all of you. And particularly with fucking like real serious issues and things. So man, I'm, I'm so proud of you, bro. I, I know you, you don't fucking don't really know me that well, no, but likewise, I'm proud man, of you, likewise, bro. Like, I've, I've seen some of your journey as well. And, yeah. um, I love what you're doing and I love like, you're an amazing podcaster just from, no one's been able to make me cry to be honest with you. So <laughs> oh, sorry, but I didn't. No, 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 didn't no. Mean, it's all good. Cry. It's all good. Um, no, it's good, man. Like, and as I said, bro, like the, the, uh, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Like, you know, even you reaching out and getting me on here, I've been very inactive for these past few months. So, um, you know, what goes around comes around in content, you know what I mean? So I definitely we'll, we'll be there when you need me. And, um, yeah, I appreciate you too, bro. And I'm, sure. I'm proud of you, man. Like your podcasting your space, fucking amazing. Thanks brother. I love your energy. What's, what's, what's next? You've got that. I wanted to ask one more thing. How, what's the timeline that people can expect? Cause this is going out next week. This will be, mm. this will be live next in less, in, in less than a week. How long can people expect you to be, you know, active again? Cause I know there's fucking thousands of people that are waiting for it. I believe that my new business partner and I will be active. He's going to hate me for saying this, but like, <laughs> Who knows, man? Like, fuck, maybe four weeks, you yeah, know? Yeah, so no, not but, fucking long to go. Yeah, yeah, not long to go. Not long to go. But he's a he's a really good, he's a go-getter as well. Yeah. So as soon as he can feel me, like, he's like, fuck, let's, let's get let's after it. it. Yeah, so, yeah. What about with boxing? Anything later in the year or? Well, yeah, I've I've been talking to Georgie Rose to do something in December. So, um, but that's in the back burners. Like, uh, I've. I've got, I've got, uh, I've got other things to focus on now. The boxing was just a part of the content, you know, yeah. it was like, why not? And, uh, this is one thing as well that I'll pass on. Um, cause a lot of, a lot, a lot of people always message me like all the time, as I was saying, like, I'm going through this, I'm going through this breakup, I'm blah, blah, blah. The, uh, if, if you're not a content creator or you're not, you know, you, you just, doing normal nine to five or whatever, not normal, but you're doing a nine to five, do things that 
are outside of your comfort zone. That's the only way that you can grow. You don't need to be a professional athlete. You don't need to be a content creator. You don't do things that you wouldn't normally do. Like might be an activity, might be art, might be whatever it may be. If it's something that makes you feel uncomfortable in a, in a positive way and, and it's something that, you know, it might be your biggest fear. When you, when you start ticking off those types of boxes, it's f- amazing. You, you, you grow as a person. So, yeah. Just leave it at that, eh? Leave it at that, brother. Way to end. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Easy, my boy. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode or you got something out of it, do yourself a favor. Do me a favor. Do your friends a favor and share this with them and they can come along on this journey with us. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.